Hydrophobia is a high-tech, low-price thrill ride that has you struggling to survive in an enormous, terrorist-ridden, waterlogged ship. There's a myriad of systems powering the game, and you'll witness plenty of intense water effects that might fool you into thinking you're playing a full-priced retail release. The world's largest ship, which shelters a large portion of the population, falls under attack by a death cult, and only Kate Wilson, a spunky girl with cool hair, rock climbing experience, and an engineering degree, can save the day. The backstory comes through collectibles and a mostly off-screen friend, Scoot, whose Scottish brogue can be a little intense. I'm working so that you can have the night off. Starting unarmed, Kate has to make do with her wits, sneaking, climbing, and swimming. Considering how uncomfortably she squirrels around on dry land, steering Kate takes some time to get used to, while the climbing is limited only to certain heights and ledges. Exploration won't be your first choice of activities in hydrophobia, though some hidden areas do exist. Swimming feels better, and Kate's mighty lungs don't rob the act of drowning of its significance, it just relieves the annoyance of constant death. Gunplay consists of cowering in cover and popping off ineffectual sonic bullets. There's an op 2 scoring system which encourages you to off enemies using the exploding elements littering the environment. You'll infrequently come across more orthodox ammunition, but it's easy to stick with what you've been doing all along. If you're dead set on racking up a high score, wait until the post-game challenge room, where you can also manipulate water telekinetically. The water effects and puzzles are hydrophobia's highlights. There's not much in the way of backtracking, the problems that do pop up demand immediate solutions. Sporadic non-linear segments reward reflexes with brief cutscenes and in-game medals without punishing you for failure. Watching the water flow from room to room, sweeping up debris into a submerged maelstrom is a treat, even towards the end. And it's even more gratifying when you see a nemesis is drowning in your wake. Oh, you did it, girl! You saved him! The wash, rinse, repeat metaphor is more than an apropos pun when it comes to hydrophobia's structure. It's an apt description of the game's filler. Search out frequencies to find ciphers that unlock doors to more hallway shootouts that lead you to get more frequencies on dead bodies, interspersed by the occasional clever organic obstacle or underwater battle. No! The frequency key! It's not here! It's somewhere in the loading bay! Ah, bollocks! In all, it's a complex recipe that just isn't prepared in the most appetizing way. The scant sparks of genius are enough to see you through to the end of the game's five or so hours, and the cliffhanger conclusion will leave you wanting more provided the cool water effects are supported by a more thoughtful design the next time around.